Hey guys, I want to thank you for watching and contributing uh, to the show. Every day I read something about a comedian or a comedy producer that supports censorship. Fuck these people, Patton Oswalt. Comedy is meant to be uncensored. Nothing is off limits, and if the truth hurts your feelings, uh, then too bad. Change the station. Don't tell anyone else what they can or can't say. That's why I created this show, a place to find unfiltered and brutally honest comedy. And since the media, the media running libs, would never put this show out there, we did it ourselves. Me and my team, along with your support and contributions. To that end, please consider contributing to the show to keep us going. You can either click the link below, uh, below this video, or on my website on the top at nickdip.com. You fuel the show, and I appreciate all your generosity. We can't do it without you. Coming up, uh, do we have him? Uh, I'm excited about our guest today. Uh, this guy is he's a libertarian comic, and he's really smart, really goddamn funny. He has a podcast, Part of the Problem, he, and he hosts a, a, a podcast on Legion of Skanks. And uh, like I said, he's one of these guys I watch, and he touches on some political and social stuff. And I'm like, how did I miss that? And a uh, real interesting guy. I had him on my radio show. Uh, welcome to the show, Dave Smith. What's going on, brother? What's Good to be here. I uh, appreciate you coming on, Dave. Uh, what's your take? First of all, uh, since you're a comic, let's get right to it. I wish this story would go away, too, but I'm interested in your take, the whole... Because I know you, you're you a victim of some of this shit, too, because even libertarians, uh, you know, uh, have to watch what they say. But uh, Shane Gillis and the whole chink thing, which is was one of my favorite words till he did this. <laughs> that's a joke <laughs> what i mean come on uh, i mean it's so disappointing yes i know snl and nbc that doesn't surprise me because nbc i mean jesus christ you can't get more liberal and lawn michaels and show business and blah 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 but how about the other comics coming out against them what, what's your opinion on those douchebags i mean those people oh man it's it's despicable I mean, for as as a comic, for to see comedians coming out against them, that's the, like the most outrageous thing, and and it's weird. And what you said before about like libertarians get this shit or conservatives, it's really anybody who's not with the religion of the left. So anybody who's not, you know, like as Michael Malice calls the cathedral of the left. Like if you don't believe every one of their their dogmatic points about, you know, if you're not on board with like transgender bathrooms or whatever, it's, if you're not on that plantation, then you're in trouble. And uh, shit, dude, there was one there. I think it was in the Atlantic. It was one of those shit. Oh, one of those right wing things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they where they said they quoted him and uh, they, they go Shane Gillis said referring to Judd Apatow talking about his depression, that this was, quote, gayer than ISIS. And I just, how could you read that and not think it's hilarious? Like, how could you not think it's hilarious to describe someone as gayer than ISIS? Even in your outraged, wouldn't you, like, I know there's someone on your staff who was chuckling when they read this piece. They go, Judd Apatow is gayer than ISIS. Um, look, Shane's a hilarious dude, man, and it sucks. It sucks that he had to get raked over the coals. Um, is ISIS gay, by the way? I mean, when you really start to think about it, the whole thing is kind of gay. Is it? As, I don't know. It seems a bunch of dudes hanging out in fucking caves. Now, wait a minute. That's what I do every weekend with my friends. Watching yeah. 50. <laughs> and it's pretty gay. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh, they stone gay people to death, and they push them off the tops of buildings. And uh, But, yes, uh, usually the real the people who are anti-gay have that streak in them. Yeah, that's right. It's yeah. like that gay dude was about to tell him that this guy was fucking him in the butt like a week ago. So right. he's like, better kill this guy before <laughs> work gets out. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I was very uh, disappointed at seeing other comics come out. And, and my statement, when I saw you were upset, and it doesn't bother me because those, those comics that are not, for, it's very simple. If you're not for free speech, you're not a comic. It's the <laughs> best thing about our job. We can say shit. 
that you can't say in an office that 90% of the people go to every day from 9 to 5. It's my favorite part of being a stand-up. I thought that was what it was all about, you know, like, and it's changed so much in the time that I've been a comic, like I've been doing stand up for about 12 years. And I feel like when I started, everybody wanted to be that balls out edgy comic. Like that's, that's what people went for. You know, even if you went to like an open mic 12 right. years ago and, and they suck, you know, every open micers suck in general. That's like mm -hmm. where you're learning how to do this shit, but everyone would be going for the most edgy thing. Like, you know, like it'd be like, you know, like some open mic comic doing some like rape a baby joke or something. And it'd yeah. be kind of cringy, but people were trying to be edgy. And now it's almost like the, the young comics are trying to be like tattletales, but it, it's it's oh, yeah, so they're bitches, bizarre. They're snitches. They're fucking. Yes. They, they don't have the DNA of a comic. And, and I'll tell you, on, there's two levels that really it really bothers me. Number one is what you just said. It's like you don't have the DNA of a comic. That's not what a comic is supposed to be. And the second thing that bothers me is the more political aspect of it, which is kind of impossible to ignore because it's all about left wing orthodoxies. Like I was watching the other day. Um, I just saw the, the clip online of uh the latest the the latest roast the uh um uh what's his name um, yeah alec baldwin the alec baldwin roast and i watched nikki glazier's uh set they had her clip up there and yeah. by, by the way i'm not shitting it was really fucking funny like whatever dude wrote that for her is very talented so i'm not like <laughs> shitting on uh, I, i'm kidding know, by the way i love nikki i, love I do nikki. too I, I mean i i listened to her radio show in the car she's actually very good on the radio and she's in her own head like but it's funny. A lot of she's, a lot of broad very, comics are in their own head, and there's nothing there. Like Lena yeah. fucking Dunham, whatever she was. <laughs> but Nikki's kind of funny, and she was talking about it on her show, go after the after the rose, talking about how she. Yeah. And so I, I I don't watch them anymore because you know I uh, I helped get that I helped get that franchise started, and they don't call me well, anymore. Well, that's the thing, and it's not a coincidence <laughs> where your politics of, are and of, where her politics are, and why someone doesn't get there. And then it's like this thing where. It's this weird game. So anyway, the reason I brought Nikki said really funny, by the way, but she has this one joke. Great. It was a great joke about uh, uh, Casey Anthony. She had one bit where she was like, I think it, she, she was ripping uh, somebody for their parenting. She goes, at least Casey Anthony knows where her kid is. Yes. Great joke. Tremendous. Hilarious. Hilarious joke. But what's interesting about it is nobody's getting offended over that. Well, like, that's no. completely fine. No. You can make a dead kid joke. You can make, like, that's no big deal. It's, but if you make a transgender joke, now we have to get offended. If you say chink, now we have to get offended. So it's only when you, you like, push back against one of the left-wing orthodoxies, then we all have to get offended. And it's like, for anybody who doesn't, isn't a left-wing guy, well, why the fuck do I have to play this game? I despise the left. Why do I have to play on their turf where we'll only get offended by a joke that's about like race or gender or whatever? And and but at the same time, any of these things are just fine. Well, it doesn't so, hurt that it came out of the mouth of a female comic, number one. Yes, sure. I know they can get in a little bit of trouble. But this is the other thing. There's certain grades of trouble you can get in. Comes out of your mouth, mine could cost you your career. Comes out of I, I keep coming back to this point. The best example is Tracy Morgan when his wife was pregnant saying, if, if, if the baby's gay, I'm going to kill it. And uh, he's hosting SNL this year. And fucking, he has, right. a, he has a show on TBS. Again, black guy. I've been trying to tell people. Uh, people act like this political correct wave, this censorship from, le you know, affects everybody equally. Female comics, black comics, gay comics. When it, 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 it was created to shut me up and you up more than anybody. Yeah. And I keep trying to explain that. Like Chappelle's special, I'm talking to uh, Dave Smith, by the way. Uh, Ch Chappelle's special, I, he, he's, I mean, he's as good as anybody. I said that before. I don't think Pryor or, or Chris Rock has anything on this guy. He's one of my favorite comics of all time, smooth as silk. And I love the special. But my problem was the people that react to the special. But he's fearless. Well, where the fuck's the fearlessness? Well, he could get punished. Were they going to cut him down from forty million to twenty million a special? That's right. Or, I mean, th that's the point. Where if a Colin Quinn or a, uh, Noah McDonald, let's say back in the day, if he said that today, you you're gone. I'm going to kill my baby if it's. <laughs> That's right. to me the best the best example. I keep going back to it, but no, absolutely. But it's like so somebody like um right like Chappelle. It's like oh he's 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 so ballsy for doing this shit. And like okay, fine. Like he yeah, there, there was a balls out special. Absolutely. Sure, it was a great special. Absolutely. I loved it. But 
It's like, look at what he lost compared to what Shane Gillis just lost. Shane didn't get one sketch off on SNL, and now who the fuck knows what that guy's going to do with his career. Whereas, like you said, Chappelle is is fine. He's getting tens of millions of dollars for for one special. He's he's doing just fine. And that's the point I was trying to make on my podcast was like, for all the comics, and I see this a lot where once it's one of their own gets in trouble. Like once somebody who's like left leaning gets in trouble with the PC cops, then you start seeing a lot of this like, all right, guys, this is getting a little bit too crazy. We don't want to ruin Dave Chappelle. We don't want to take down this guy. You know, it's like, yeah, Justin Trudeau was in blackface, but come on, he apologized. Yes. And it's like, oh, yeah. well, where was that when Megan Kelly never wore blackface? She just wasn't uh, sufficiently outraged by the idea of blackface, but she used to work for Fox News, so that bitch has to go. Yeah. But Justin Trudeau, who's the fucking prime minister of Canada. Yes. He gets to just be like, oh, yeah, I did blackface. Yeah, you know, it's white privilege, blah, blah. And they're like, oh, OK, you can stay. So that's the thing. That's why I was saying for all these comics defending Dave Chappelle, who was defending you? Who was defending Owen Benjamin? Who's defending? When is there ever a right wing guy who you'll give this same kind of like, oh, OK, they oh, well, he's just being brave. It's their religion. Yeah. Uh, showbiz is ultra liberal. I've always said this. If you lean right on two out of 50 issues in show business, you're a Nazi. So yeah. I lean 48 out of 50. But um, and <laughs> you know, to give you an idea. But uh, no, you're right about uh, about Chappelle. And by the way, Trudeau and blackface people going, oh, my God, he's, it's right before the election. Yeah, he's going to use he's going to lose a huge swath of black voters up in Vancouver, <laughs> <and> fucking Calgary. <laughs> <laughs> Only thing black in Canada are hockey pucks and some oil in fucking Edmonton. What are we getting here? <laughs> oh, God. I think the Suban brother, P.K. Suban, and his, uh, <laughs> nobody knows hockey, but those are two black guys that are tremendous hockey players. I'm sure they're pissed, and a couple rappers in Toronto. But, uh, yeah, him with the, <laughs> fucking, he was doing Aladdin, first of all. Uh, but it's, it's good to see a guy like that who preaches this horse shit have it come back and bite him in the ass. That's my only pleasure in it. That, well, and also, and, you know, and that's the same thing, like for comedians, which I don't get at all. It's like for comedians who are jumping into this social justice warrior PC shit. It's like, do you really want to play this game? Do you think there's nothing you've ever said? There's there's no comedian who doesn't have something on their track record where you stepped out of bounds. Because that's just like what we do. I can't find. I've looked at my thing. I can't find anything. <laughs> I got, I was supposed to do an Applebee's commercial. This is a true story. About 10 years ago, my agent sets it up. They're going to give me 22 grand to go down to Atlanta, shoot an Applebee's commercial with uh, the announcer of the Braves, Chip Carey, and somebody else, two famous guys. And uh, it was all set to go. At the 11th hour, I get up the next morning, there's a text from my agent. Uh, they're saying, no, they went through, <laughs> I don't know why they didn't do this in the first, they went through uh, stuff on social media, found some of my roast jokes. Some of the shit I said when I was roasting Artie Lang and Howard Stern had some uh, killer Jew jokes in there that didn't fly with the Applebee's people. Uh, <laughs> I went after Robin, a black one. It was the funny shit ever. Uh, next thing I know, no 22 grand, yeah. which means I had to do skid marks and buffaloes five or six times to make the... But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you can, you, like you said, you can go back in anybody's history. I wish the people on the right would start digging a little harder and a little faster... I mean, Alec Baldwin, Alec Baldwin, who's hosting, uh, you know, who's on SNL, he called a black journalist a coon and a crackhead in New York. Yeah, I hasn't mean, he been arrested you know, multiple times and, like, he fucking called his daughter a pig or some shit? Well, it's like, that was somehow true. That'll... She was kind of chubby and she's very hoary. But, um, no, yeah, I don't know. no, listen, <laughs> everybody's telling the truth here. <laughs> My point is just Shane can't tell the truth about the Jew chinks. So the if we can all call... <laughs> he, even I was watching that go, I, I don't even fucking understand <laughs> he goes a lot of China, a lot of China down there, a lot of Chinese, a lot of Chinese. <laughs> but I'll tell you, you know, there's something Naughty about boy. it that's funny is that Shane is like a red state guy who comes from like a very working class background, and they detest that. That's the thing that it, this is right. the great irony. Right. Of, of the left is that these like left-leaning socialist types, they claim to be championing the working class, championing the, the black community. None of their values are at all in line with what the working class, or like, do you really think like being sensitive to transgender people no, is the, the, the black blacks, community? Yeah, Antonio Brown's big on that. He was leading a march. Yes. And, but no, <laughs> that, 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 that's such a good point. You know, they, they're so, I always say this, who do you think the average American has more? Who do the working class? The working class person has more in common with who? 
a Hillary Clinton or a Donald Trump or, or an Obama? Who, 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 who can they relate to more? I mean, right. And then and then it's like when you get this uh, this this tape of Donald Trump, the grab him by the pussy thing. And it's like these these elite, you know, like media coastal types trying to t- talk to the middle of the country. and go, yeah. Aren't you so outraged? I mean, have you ever heard anything like that? And they're like, yes, every day we all talk that way. Like, what are you what are you saying? Who are you talking to? Where do you think pussies are nice enough to be grabbed in Hollywood? <laughs> Not fucking yeah, right. Ohio, but fucking Baltimore. <laughs> but like they're. They're talking that way too. It's just this act. It's like this act that you're supposed to put on in front of the camera, and it's fun. It, it, it's it's it reminds me of you remember that that um that clip when Patrice was on uh, Fox News and they start going over all the um like the angry pirate and that shit and yep. like how he what he was saying yep. and then the cameraman starts cracking up at right. one point and Patrice turns to him and does a whole thing. He's like, "Why are you laughing?" Well, it's that's who cracks up at it. That's who cracks up. The cameraman. Yeah, but it's not the, the guy. The on best camera. grip guy. Right. Yeah. But that's that's who's laughing like the fucking worker who's going to go grab a drink with his boys and they'll be joking like this after the show. That's who's laughing at this shit. So it's all it's all an act. And that's that's the irony. It's always been of socialism. It's this elitist philosophy that's always elites who are involved in it, who claim they're standing up for the average working man. But go go talk to the average worker and see what their views on fucking on on trannies are. They're not going to line up with you. Dave, who, 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 who's, this is a famous quote. Who said, uh, kill all the intellectuals first? Mm, I don't know. I Hitler? Th- I think it was Brett Baer on Fox News. No, um, <laughs> I, it, no, it was somebody like that. It was somebody, uh, but it's the one thing I agreed with. It was some dictator, but kill all yeah. the intellectuals. Let's, you know. Uh, yeah, no, it made a few good points. Kill all the intellectuals and uh, the Jews are running Applebee's. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, and, and we're talking to Dave Smith, the uh, very funny uh, libertarian comedian out of New York, and he's got a great podcast, uh, part of the problem, but he's not. He's part of the solution. He's out there taking it in the face every day like me. I, I knew we were in trouble, Dave, and this was when Jay Leno was hosting The Tonight Show, and, and I know liberals who are going to see this. Well, they're not going to see They don't watch me. They're too close-minded, but uh, people are going to go, oh, the poor white guys, they always give you that knee-jerk reaction. Oh, you're so oppressed. And so, Shut the fuck up. Actually, we are right now as far as to what we can say. Not in life, but I'm just talking about as far as this goes. But I was watching uh, The Tonight Show with Jay Leno, and Lisa Lampanelli was at the height of her fame. She's on there doing black jokes. I mean, like, you know, fucking really racist shit. How do you, how do you keep a, uh, I don't know, how do you stop a black guy, hide his welfare check under his work boots, some shit like Jay's there cackling, and I'm going, what the fuck am I watching here? <laughs> that was the first, that was, uh, I mean, that was 20, probably, I don't know, 15 years ago, whenever Jay was up. But I'm like, how the fuck, oh, that's right, she's abroad, who yeah. says she slept with a thousand black guys, and, you know. I'm not going to say that yet. But that's what that there's and that's what there's a big reaction against now. And then they like when there's a reaction against it, the left will look at it and be like, oh, look, see Nazis. There's all these Nazis like running around. But it's like, yeah, well, you want to keep lecturing white people. Eventually, what do you think these fucking young white kids are going to do? What do you right. think this white 20 year olds going to do? And like, you know, there's a weird thing where it's almost like the logical conclusion of the left is some hardcore right wing shit like the the logical if you're oh yeah oh yeah if we had if we had a uh the civil rights movement in the mid 60s and you're telling me by 2019 after you know ending jim crow integration affirmative action all the pc police stuff you're telling me it's still such a racist country well what's the logical conclusion of that you're like well maybe this multicultural thing can't work then like maybe maybe you can't have a multiracial society. It's almost like you and I'm not saying I agree with that, but it's almost the the logical conclusion of the left to go. So then maybe segregation is the answer. Well, they are saying that by having yeah. separate graduations at Harvard yeah. and separate dorm rooms on college campuses and, and fucking Rachel Maddow goes to Rockefeller University, wherever the fuck that is, sees a wall. They had pictures of a bunch of white guys who graduated from Nobel Prize winners, famous scientists, and she bitches and says that, what's with all the white dudes? And they take them down. And I said, okay, well, that's fine. If you're going to do that, don't, don't complain when I go into the Waffle House down here and start pulling, pulling off the employee of the month pictures. 
<laughs> I'm heading to fucking uh, Motown Museum with a sledgehammer. You guys have a problem with that? What's it all the white <laughs> right. dude? She's pissed because she's a white dude and she wasn't on the wall. That's my theory there. But uh, um, yeah, the double standard, they're shameless. And anyways, I think you and I have got the point across. Anything you want to plug there before I let you go? Oh, I got uh, an hour special, uh, Libertas. It's up at uh, gasdigitalnetwork.com. Part of the problem, Legion of Skanks. Those are my podcasts. There you go. He's really smart and really funny. I was blown away the first time I had you on the radio show. People kept telling me, you got to have Dave Smith. And I'm like, I think it's not too sharp and too funny. I don't want to look stupid here. Uh, <laughs> but I gave in. But thanks a lot, Dave. And uh, hopefully we'll have you back real quick. All right, man. Good All to right. talk to you, Nick. Take Be care. good, brother. All right. Well, it's so funny you say that. I remember living out in Los Angeles when I was doing like Grace Under Fire. Brett Butler became a friend of mine. She was smart as a whip. Lefty, you know. Uh, to some extent. Uh, yeah. Uh, but she, I remember we were at dinner, Trader Joe's, or whatever the fuck it was called, and with it, my manager, her managers, and we're having dinner, and the election had just happened. I forget which one in the 90s, Clinton, or whatever the fuck. And I bring up how I vote, and she goes, isn't that cute? He thinks his vote counts. Ugh. And I went, what do you fuck? What do you mean it doesn't count? What are you a fucking, and boy, was she right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was, that yeah. was in the mid-90s. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, God. I was just a t typical uh, conservative Republican guy that thought the system worked. And you're like, ah, oh, drats, you know, they got this Clinton guy in there now, or oh yeah, good, we got Bush in there now. Oh hell, this Obama guy. And then you realize, like, oh, like you said, it's all scripted. You you check out. You see, these guys are 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 bashing each other these are life and death issues that they're discussing and then there's a picture of them with their arms around each other in the oval office or in uh the 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 senate chamber and you're like oh they're all asshole buddies and we're the fucking joke we're the fucking they must laugh thinking how stupid the american people are while they do this dance in front of us every uh four or two or four years yeah and, and the Dems said, look, we get to laugh at loud. Your role, Jim Jordan and Ted Cruz, you guys have to pretend. I, here's my best analogy ever. I gave it to Gutfeld. I said, uh, the Republicans are the Washington generals, the team that travels with the Harlem, the Harlem Globetrotters and feigns to be their competition. That's who the Republicans are. That's your role. Dems are like, oh, we, we get to tell people how stupid they are, the American people, right to their faces. You guys have to pretend to defend those idiots. And like you said, then they all go have a beer together. That's where I'm at. My wife, she dragged me down to vote in the primaries here. The fucking, I don't even know they, you know, it's like a Tuesday. My wife's going, we got to go. Go where? It's right down the street. So I didn't want to fucking have a 10-minute fight. So I go in there. I recognize about three names, you know, Herschel Walker. Yeah, you fucking great football player. <laughs> Herschel Walker's on there. A couple like camp. I'm like, I don't even like them. Even the guys I'm supposed to like, I don't, you know. And then I, there was a whole bunch of uh, things you vote on. I just went Republican, Republican, which is, you know, part of the problem. Everybody just votes party. What do you want me to do, vote Democrat? They're calling me a piece of shit. I'm a terrorist. <laughs> I'm a domestic terrorist. Domestic terrorists, you're the problem. You know, the the whole, uh, you know, we, we've seen that also. The, the greatest uh, terrorist threat to America now is... Uh, white uh, young white men and and then you know they keep shitting on uh, a group of people and then when they lose their fucking minds and do something atrocious they wonder what happened we need a motive here what happened well for an entire a couple of generations you've been telling these people they suck they're the evil they're the the cause of every problem we have in this country and then when they lose their fucking mind and go on a tear with a gun you go oh we just got to figure this out what what's going on what's what could be the problem <laughs> When's the last time a white guy really did something horrible, racially? I mean, other, the, the kid that shot up the church in South Carolina. But again, fucking cuckoo. And, and they'll say that, oh, yeah, you, you always say, you know, that's an, well, it is an isolated incident. Compared to uh, what goes on in the black community, ma oh, yeah, ma yeah. mass shootings happen every weekend in Chicago. If, it's, if the definition is four people, the fuck, yeah. that's a Wednesday night in Chicago. You had the uh, you had the guy that shot up uh, the the grocery store in Buffalo. in Buffalo yeah. here in, in in New York and uh, and then our our interim 
governor because Cuomo is such a piece of shit. They had to throw him out. Yeah. And this woman Hot, steps in the seat like she got elected. Right. Like she actually was Nobody elected. Nobody voted and, for her. And her, like we all went, yeah, good. We love your ideas. We elected you. She slides into the seat and she's making all kinds of legislation now. Gun legislation, which is hilarious. Do you know in New York State, uh, we already have had an assault weapon ban since 2013. Nine years. We've had a large capacity magazine, magazine ban. We've had in-depth background checks. These are all things in place in New York for nine years. And this guy was able to get an AR-15 and shoot up a friggin' store and kill 10 black people. And uh, uh, now they want a federal right. law that is the same as New York, that is proven it doesn't work because we just saw what happened. But the left is so stupid, they'll look at that, and this is how they think. Even with all those laws we have in the books, it's not enough. Instead yeah. of saying the real problem, oh, they went around the laws. It doesn't matter what the laws are because outlaws yeah. are outlaws. But they go, oh, we need more laws on top of the ones that don't work. No, it doesn't matter. You could have a trillion laws covering everything. That's what makes yeah. people outlaws. I can't believe that they don't get that. Oh, or they're the greatest actors in the world. I guess they really don't. You can't act for 40 years and believe that we need more gun crime. Maybe you can. I, I just, they, are you yeah. that dumb, really? Seriously. They think, uh, you know, and, and the problem with the, the, the school security, uh, they want, you know, they think somehow they're going to keep the guns out of these mental patients' hands. Uh, and, and the truth of the matter is the schools have to really be secured they need, uh, 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 you know, forty billion dollars we sent to Ukraine might have been better spent uh, making sure these schools are, are secured and locked down, and maybe cameras, buzzers, whatever it takes, and maybe some armed personnel. On, on, but the protecting of the schools is the important part. They want to put the onus on the mental patient. Now, hey, we made a new law. You now, you nuts, you can't do this now. You're not allowed to go into the school. Well. Why, would you rather your kid uh, uh, have his safety in the hands of the nut that's going to get the gun anyway? There's 400 million of them in this country, 400 <laughs> million guns, or uh, real security for these schools like you would with the bank or any other place where your valuables are stored. But they don't want to – because it doesn't matter. It's not about the kid's safety. It's not really about that. It's about disarming the American people so they can't do what Ukraine is doing to fucking Russia. That's right. That's exactly right. They, they go, we don't have the money to put a, uh, an armed officer at every school. You know how many schools are – yeah, but you just sent $40 billion to, to <laughs> yeah, Ukraine yeah. – uh, what the fuck are you talking about? And that's the answer, by the way. You harden the schools. You, there's plenty, yeah. of, plenty of retired guys that could use a job. And I like the people that go, I don't want my kid's teacher to have a gun. Okay, hold on. So what you're saying is <laughs> somebody breaks in with a machine gun into your kid's classroom, you'd rather have nobody there armed. Yeah. That's all you do. You ask direct questions like that, and they go, nah, 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 nah. Uh, you know, what? they can't they can't come up with an answer. Then, they do. They, and that that is what they say. Uh, I don't want uh, the school to turn into some armed camp or they always take it to the umpteenth level. Of course. Of hyperbole. Of course. It's always, the, you know, if one person on campus has a concealed weapon, it's, you know, an army of people are in the school uh, butting the kids in the bridge of the nose with the fucking <laughs> rifle. They they can't. They, they're like children. They, they speak in terms like children. They exaggerate things. They want it their way. They're willing to, to change the rules mid-game because they're losing. Uh, and again, where the fuck are the Republicans to, to answer this? Nothing. Nowhere. They're, Nowhere they're, they're applauding, going, wow, this is going. The uh, I'd be, only reason I'd be a little nervous my kid had, if I had kids in like middle school, which I don't, I'm 78, uh, <laughs> I'd be, I always bring it up. Boy, I'm glad I don't have kids today. And I go, if I did, they'd be fucking 45. What am I thinking? I'm 60. <laughs> I act like they'd be in first and second grade. Um, but I, I, the only, I, I'd be a little nervous with these teachers today having guns if, if I had a kid in the classroom because they might shoot him if he misgenders somebody. <laughs> That's a yeah, they. No, yeah. You hear that? He wants to be called they. 
ping pong. That they <laughs> ping pow. <laughs> yeah, they they uh they surveyed. I you know these polls. I don't believe them anyway. Uh, seventy five percent of teachers said they wouldn't want to carry a gun in school. Now that just shows you how oh, liberal oh, the boy. stupid teachers are. They they and again your point. Wouldn't you rather? I, I was watching a movie last night. I do this all the time. Whenever I'm watching a movie and there's a couple in a house and they hear something and and it's a you know you know shit's gonna hit the fan. Yeah. I go, bet that guy wished he had a gun in the night table right now. <laughs> movie would be over. Goes out, he waits, boom, shoots the bad guy. But there he is with a golf club or something or you know one of those scenes. And, and it like, worked you know, the Tiger Woods. Want a gun? You want a fucking gun? Oh my, that's hilarious. That that, that is fucking. Uh, you, you know, when they're writing the script for the movie, they go, you know, this could be settled with a gun eight minutes in. And they're like, oh, we can't have <laughs> yeah. that. We have to make them living in, I don't know, they're living in uh, Northern California and San Leandro. <laughs> they don't believe in that shit. We'll put a dildo next to the bed. See if they can... <laughs> uh, yeah. You're yeah. smack him in the face a few times like, a, like an old blackjack. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the uh, other thing great. about the mass shooting, we're talking to the great Anthony Comia, of course. Uh, and the other <laughs> thing about the, the, the mass shootings is, and I, and I believe this, um, the coverage, obviously, because the media is liberal, they hate guns. The, the coverage is just around the clock for whatever because they love anything that's anti-gun. And, and now we have a generation, a couple generations of kids out there. For, we're so media-driven in this country. Everybody wants to be a star. Even I'm doing a podcast. Um, what do you mean, even? <laughs> what the fuck does that even mean? Um, everybody wants to be, you know, these young kids just want to be famous. And if they got to screw loose, you read some of the shit they write before they go on it. They, that's, oh, yeah. they, they want to go out as somebody because they're nobody. And don't I don't want to hear bullying again every time there's a mass shooting. Well, I was picked on. He's, he's, I picked on a lot of people when I was in school. I got picked on by a kid, you know, three grades above me. But right. pe people have been bullied their whole lives, and there's been guns around. All right, so something else is in the mix there. Whether it's, yeah, I, I, don't know I, I, th I think you're you're absolutely right. right. It's this craving for fame and and materialism and, and, and shit like that. And and years ago, when you just had a circle of friends and people you knew from school, it was a pretty small bubble of people that you dealt with on a daily basis. And maybe there was one guy that was doing very well, another guy, you know. But you were mostly just middle class pieces of shit going in the woods to smoke some cigarettes and, and drink uh, some beers on the weekends. But uh, th they've got to the point now where they can see so many people that have gotten so much money from TikTok and Instagram and, and YouTube yeah, and all yeah. these platforms that they perform on, whatever it is, lip syncing a fucking song for uh, <laughs> five seconds. And, and they go, well, why don't I have that? Why? Why? How come so many people are doing so well with this, and I don't have it? There is this envy and jealousy and resentment, and and then again, like I said, you couple that with, well, you're a piece of shit. You're the source of all the sorrow in this country. How the fuck do not more kids not lose their fucking minds? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, the internet is uh, pretty damn corrosive. Especially oh. at that age, their minds are they're so impressionable and they're still forming, uh, you know, and they, they don't know what they're doing. And, and they all, that is the one common thread, these, these fucking, they're odd kids that shoot up the, it is mental illness, but you, we're a country of 350 million people. What are you yeah. going to have uh, neurological workups for everybody every fucking <laughs> couple of weeks? Yeah. You got to put guys in front of the school with guns. That's going to stop a normal person, a crazy motherfucker. That's the, it's a deterrent. <laughs> it's that it is, it's, it's that it's easy. A, a fucking cannon in front of the gym. <laughs> What's the matter with these they people? don't. Uh, yeah, they don't seem to understand that. They want to. They want to trust that the nut job uh, won't procure a gun because it's illegal. Uh, great strategy you got there. I just got a few more minutes with uh, the great Anthony Cobb. Hey, uh, I want your thoughts on the death of Ray Liotta. Boy, that fucking, huh? That kind of hit home. Yeah, you know, you know I mean? you you you, you kind of um, 
watch these guys in movies. He was always one of the coolest guys. The good, Goodfellas, by the way, obviously one of the greatest movies ever made, even though that fucking Jadrul fucking De Niro is in it now. I can't stand that son of a bitch. <laughs> he just said something else stupid yesterday, didn't he? What the fuck was it about? I don't even know. Yeah, He's something liberal. Yeah, he, he, he was on, uh, I think he was on... Uh, Colbert. Yeah. He was on Colbert. Oh, and he's Jesus. just the worst talk show guest ever. He sits there and Colbert's, you know, you got to kiss his ass because he's De Niro. And he's like, uh, oh, just, uh, you know, what do you think? Uh, you, don't, you don't get very political, uh, uh, do you? That's kind of a joke because he's been, you know, I'll punch him in the mouth kind of a <laughs> yeah, fucking thing. And he goes, you don't get very political. He goes, no, no, no I don't. That's it. Just pulling teeth. You know, Nick, what it's like when you have a guest and you're pulling fucking teeth to have them say anything. Help me out here, Andrew. Help me out. I'm trying to do a podcast. And he's always been like that. Remember fucking, I remember Rickles after they shot Casino. Rickles was talking about, yeah, and, you know, being interviewed years later about working with Daniel. He's a dope. Rickles like, you're fucking dope. He said about two words. How you doing, about <laughs> Just what you just did. <laughs> they're stupid. That's what makes them good actors, by the way, is they're devoid of any actual personality, you feel ideology, it. I, anything. And and a writer puts words in their head, yeah. and a director tells them where to stand and where, how to that's move right. and shit. And when they don't have that, that's why they're great actors. They're devoid of any humanity or, or anything. You could not possibly carry on a conversation with these people that is the and, absolute truth you know that's that's the trade-off you get when you get oh wow i love de niro in this and taxi driver and mean streets and goodfellas <laughs> and and you're like oh that's what you got huh well sometimes <laughs> <laughs> but leona uh yeah i i had the pleasure of having ray leona as a guest on the ona I show years so. ago i thought so and uh just fun to talk to Always willing to talk about good fellas and, and, and certain scenes that you were curious about what was going on behind the scenes on it and everything. And, uh, yeah, just one of those uh, cool guys. And, um, you know, he's down there in the Dominican Republic filming a movie. And I, I'm sure he got the best of medical care uh, <laughs> while down there. You know, it's a shame. Yeah, I heard he's suing this. His estate is suing a witch doctor from the. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Fucking guy showed up and put leeches on his chest for 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah it uh, turns out the witch doctor put on the wrong mask for the uh, <laughs> the ritual he was supposed to do. It happens down there. <laughs> what a horrible... Uh, you go out in the Dominican Republic. So did Arturo Gotti. Where Was he in the Dominican Republic? He was somewhere. Remember Arturo Gotti, the boxer? Oh, yeah, yeah. And his, they, they Someone think, else recently died in the Dominican Republic, too. Another guy that yeah, was, uh, think he was an Dominican. actor or something. Um, or a... Yes. Sports figure. Desi Arnaz. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. Why the fuck are you going down there? I didn't even get off the ship when uh, they, they stopped there on one of the cruises. I was like, oh, Dominican Republic. Yeah, I'll stay here in the casino on the boat. Thank you. Well, yeah. Uh, what the fuck? Why don't you just take a cab uptown to 180th and Washington? <laughs> You'll be in the Dominican Republic in five minutes. What's the matter with these people, Henry? <laughs> uh, all right, Ann. I've kept you long enough. I can't wait till you get down here. Oh, um, I know. Um, you know. I know. Uh, you, you, know, know uh, you, you know who else is moving down uh, to the Greenville Please area? Please tell me it's Alyssa him, Milano. Uh, no. I just gave him my uh, realtor's uh, number. Is uh, Mr. Gavin McInnes. He's, uh, he wants to get out of uh -oh. there and move down south. Does the feds know that you, I, me, you, and him will be in the same region? Of the country? <laughs> yeah, is that even allowed? <laughs> It's good. They're just, they'll look at the playbook for fucking Waco or Ruby Ridge on how to deal with uh, the three of us, I guess. Didn't Gavin McGinnis start Vice? Yeah, yeah, he started Vice many years ago. It was, and it was kind of a liberal thing, like the true, the true aspect of liberalism against the government, against uh, the powers I that was gonna be. Say. Funny, sarcastic parody, right? Uh, things like that. Right. Yeah, and then it turns into whatever the fuck it is it's now. It's really, I mean, it's just the opposite. I when I yeah. see shit, what's funny because I finally got my money. Vice came down here to interview me about Brett Butler. Oh, shit. Um, why were they doing that? Oh, they're doing a big thing on, on, on famous comedians or whatever. So they come, Brett Butler gave uh, Vice my name, and they came down, and I, you know, I get all defensive right away. I'm like, I know these motherfuckers are going to 
<laughs> yeah. Even my manager, Tommy, so smart. He goes, listen, just stick to Brett Butler because what they're going to ask you, they're going to ask you about Geraldo and Louie, and they're going to try to get three episodes out of you, which is so smart. <laughs> and sure enough, <laughs> I brought up Louie for a second. They're like, can we talk? I go, no, you can't. We can't. Oh, like, my manager was vultures. exactly right. But they were very nice to me. They were very nice. The only problem was I just got my money yesterday. I did it over a month ago. <laughs> this morning it they came pay in. good. Yeah. yeah give you oh bucks, yeah. Bucks. No, it was it was wasn't. Yeah, fuck yeah. Better than nice. getting on a plane and doing Uncle Funnies and fucking skid marks, uh, <laughs> North Dakota. Um, yeah. So uh, that's that. Well, and I can't thank you enough, buddy, uh, for coming through. Love it, um, Nick. Love <laughs> love coming on and uh, venting with uh, the great we, Nick DePaul. We got to do it more man. often. I have nobody else to talk to down here. Um, <laughs> you'd think I'd be soon. surrounded by rednecks, but Savannah's kind of liberal. There's colleges here and all kinds of crap. Uh, yeah, yeah. But there's as plenty soon as of I people can get a like... fucking microwave oven and some <laughs> interior doors. I'll uh, I'll be down there. <laughs> All right, brother. Uh, good talking to you, and uh, let's do it again. Absolutely, Nick. Right. Be well. Have a good weekend. You too, buddy. <laughs> Take care. The great Anthony Comia, ladies and gentlemen, great way to uh, wrap up the day. Don't forget to sign up at uh, patreon.com, thecomicsgym.com, uh, and cameo.com. If you want me to roast a friend or relative, go to cameo.com, click on it, it'll tell you how to do it, and I'll make a little recording. We'll send it to him. You guys think it, I'll say it. You're very welcome. We'll see you back here tomorrow at the same time. Have a good day, everybody.